DJ Pro is an amazing DJ software, and in this video, I'm gonna show you which settings I recommend for DJ Pro for the Mac. To access your settings menu in the app for the Mac, we're gonna bring our mouse all the way up if you're in full screen, and then we're gonna go over here all the way to the left corner where it says DJ Pro. We are gonna click that, and then the second one down, we are going to access our settings. So now we are in our settings. There's a bunch of different categories. I'm gonna start with general and just go down the list and show you which ones you should keep on. All right, so the first one is going to, the first one is going to be the start playback. What this means, if you have it selected, whenever you load up a song, it's going to immediately start. So you see, as soon as I load it up, it started. This may be beneficial if you're used to DJing with turntables and other ways of DJing where you're used to the song immediately playing. For me, I find it's really annoying and it kind of throws me off. I like to load the track onto the deck and then have the control of playing it when I want to. So I would recommend clicking this off. It is gonna start the app with it on. I would recommend keeping it off, so I'm just gonna turn that off. So now, when we load up a song, it's not gonna play immediately. This is just a personal preference and you may wanna keep it on, but I keep it off. Now the next one is going to be down here and this is slider range. This is for the BPM. You could also adjust this by using the drop down menu over here by your BPM. And this is going to be the sensitivity of the slider. So right now I have it in the middle at 16. So you could go up 16% or down 16% with the BPM. But if you go to 75, now we have a much larger range that we could change the BPM, but then this slider doesn't get any bigger. So it's really hard to fine tune it. So I found in the middle at 16, is the most control you could get. And I usually don't do BPM jumps more than 16. So I would recommend keeping it in 16 because that'll be the most precise and the easiest to use for most styles of DJing. Now the next one down here is the start time and stop time. So I have it at zero. This means how long it's gonna take for the track to get up to speed. So let me just give you an example. If I go all the way up to five seconds, press play and it will slowly get to the correct speed. I would recommend keeping this at zero because when I play the song, I just want it to play normal. I'm not used to DJing with turntables, so this is what I'm used to. But if you are someone that is switching over from using record decks, then you may wanna keep it on a little bit to get the feel like you're used to. So now we are gonna go over to device. These are gonna be your audio device settings. And if you wanna use a headphone splitter or if you wanna use a booth output or you want to change the main output you could do that here i'm going to skip over to dvs i'm going to make a separate video for dvs when i get the expensive turntables <laughs> next one that we're going to talk about is in sound so this is where you can control your mixer so this i recommend keeping the crossfader curve on default eq type i keep it on classic and my neuro mix i like to have drums harmonics and vocals it's easier for me and then the FX routing is post fader. That means that if you use like an, an echo or something and the track is no longer playing, you will still be able to hear the effect. Down here, these are really important. The first one is audio limiter. This will prevent clipping and distortion uh, of your speakers. So if you're DJing at a club, a nightclub, or even at a friend's house and you don't have this on, you could possibly, probably won't happen, but you could damage their speakers if you are clipping and playing too high of an audio sync signal. Next is something that people from other softwares may be confused about, but this app, they don't make it that easy for you to control the gain. So if I go back and see our mixer, the gain is this tiny little knob up here. It's really hard to use. The app isn't set up for you to adjust the gain by yourself. You could do it like I just showed you, but they have an amazing auto gain feature. So just keep this on and you don't ever have to worry about the gain when you're using this app. It will automatically adjust them so both songs are at the same volume, which is great. One less thing to do and it works really well. I cannot stress as much that I definitely recommend keeping the auto gain on. Auto mix, I made a separate video about auto mix, but for but a quick um, 
a quick tip is the transitions I keep on automatic because then it chooses which transition is going to be best and it sounds like a real DJ. Now we are in our appearance. I would recommend keeping the cue point style on high contrast. So look over here. That is high contrast. The whole thing changes. If you do low contrast, then the color is just the the symbol. So I, it makes it easier to see. I cover, color code all of my cue points. I would recommend keeping it on high contrast. Next is down here, set and jump. So that refers to these buttons over here. Set and jump. So this is what I'm used to DJing. This is how I started with that for the iPad. So it's a set and then you could jump to it. If you want to change that, you could change it to Q, and then we just get a Q button here. It's one less button. I don't know why anyone would do that, so I keep it on set and jump. Jog wheel styles. So these are our jog wheels. I have compact dark selected now. You could do compact light, or you could do extended. I would recommend doing extended because now you get a bigger surface view of the jog wheel. You could scratch a little bit easier, and I think it just looks cool and it's easier to see, and you still get all of your information there. And then the waveforms, I like to keep on high contrast. I like to show the minute marker. And then the save power, you can dim inactive deck so the deck that you're not using will get a little bit dimmer. If you want to access see which keyboard shortcut cuts you have. You could see them over here in shortcuts. I'll make a separate video about that. And then I would recommend keeping the multi-touch control on. You could use two fingers on your track trackpad to scratch the deck, move sliders and knobs, control with FX. FX. So there's a lot of ways to, to, there's a lot of settings you can change to make this app work for your style of DJing. And if you want to see my full beginner tutorial on this app for the Mac, check out this video over here.